Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron here with an old edition of the Lamsa Bible, the George M. Lamsa Bible, uh, the Bible from Aramaic, ancient manuscripts. And, you know, people rarely have um, just a middle of the road opinion about this Bible. Some people out there think this is the most accurate Bible. I've had people tell me, and I, I've also got the, the famous, I think it's like a big blue version of this. It's packed up somewhere. I don't even know where it's at. But I happen to get this real inexpensive on eBay. But again, people don't really just have this middle of the road opinion about this Bible. And I see people, the Lamsa Bible, the Antichrist translation. And, uh, you know, it comes from the Syriac Peshetta, but a lot of people would say it did not come from the uh, most accurate manuscripts of the Peshetta, which is the Syriac. But a, a lot of people say that's the oldest. Now, this one is by A.J. Holman which is America's oldest Bible publisher, 1748. And it was later merged with Broadman, which was a Southern Baptist publishing house, and merged into Broadman Holman. And now it's kind of like just the Holman Christian Standard Bible, Holman Publishing. And I think Broadman is used for their church supplies, if I'm not mistaken. So... This is printed in 1957 by A.J. Holman Company, copyright 3339-1940, and uh, manufactured in the United States of America. So it has a long introduction. Um, we'll show you some things, words resembling one another. In the King James Version. Now, it's not totally a received text version. I know like, um, I want to say it's Matthew 27, 46 is when he says, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that uh, that is different. That they would say that the, the camel is really a cord in a certain place. And um, why hast thou forsaken me was really translated, I think even in this Bible, it would be uh, why... Have I been spared for this? So kind of some unique things there. This 5th century, uh, 464 Old Testament manuscript, uh, the oldest dated biblical manuscript in existence. Now, the Sea Scrolls were found nine years before this and years following, obviously, um, Aramaic, Syriac, Old Testament. I'll show you this too. It's kind of neat. 550 lectionary. And I will tell you this too, is whenever you're studying biblical manuscripts, a lot of time lectionaries are a kind of a forgotten uh, in that. Now it's not forgotten by a lot of uh, textual critical guys, but it is forgotten uh, just by your, your common folks just looking around at the Bible and stuff. So English equivalents, excuse me, English names and their Aramaic equivalents. So Jesus is Ishu, Messiah is Meshaka, Spirit, Ghost is Roka, Lord is Moriah, God is Alaha, Abraham is Orahim, Isaac is Eskak, Jacob is Jacob. So uh, let me just read. I'm going to start in Genesis. I'll go two or three different places, just give you a feel. Okay, God created the heavens. Excuse me, God created the heavens and the earth in the very beginning. So this is one of the few translations that actually uses the plural heavens in Genesis 1, like the King James Version. And the earth was out form and void, and darkness was on upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. So that's very similar. Let's go to John 3.16. Let's see how similar that is. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he even gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. So some differences, but uh, monogonies is still begotten there. That's good. Let's see what 118 says. Some these Bibles translate that kind of funny. No man has ever seen God, but the firstborn of God, who is in the bosom of his Father, he hath declared him. John 1.1 1, 1 looks about the same. The Word was in the beginning 
and that very word was with God, and God was that word. The same was in the beginning with God. I want to make sure it's got Mark 16. I think it does. I didn't check that before we did this video, though. Should have, probably. So, yeah. It does have Mark 16, uh, 9 through 20. I see he's got a note here, Aramaic idiom for enemies. So it does look like it still has the yees and the these in here, which is good for accuracy for those that don't know that ye and you are always plural, thee and thou are always singular. So let's see here about... Uh, yeah, Matthew 27, 46. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice and said, Eli, Eli, Iamana, Shabachthani, which means, my God, my God, for this I was spared. So, you know, again, a lot of people be like, eh, you know, obviously that's not congruent with the King James or basically any other translation to my knowledge. 238 of Acts, then Simon said to them, Repent, be baptized every one of you in the name of the Lord Jesus for the remission of sin, so that you may receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, for the promise was made to you and to your children for all that are far off, even as many as the Lord, as many as the very God shall call. I'm going to go to one more, John 3 here. John 3, just wanted to see something on the uh, ye's and the these. Okay, 3.6. What is born of flesh is flesh, and what is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be surprised, because I've told you that you all must be born again. Hmm. Okay, the wind blows where it pleases, and you hear its sound, but you do not know whence it comes and whence whither it goes. Such is every man which is born of the Spirit. Okay, belongs to Bible. And uh, when you're collecting Bibles or you're getting Bibles for your uh, collection, just so you know just a little bit about it, where it comes from, the Peshetta, the Aramaic, the Syriac has a lot of criticisms about it. But uh, the Peshetta and the Syriac uh, does have some to offer in the realms of biblical textual studies. So, you know, again, it's just something that you need to be aware of depending on what you decide to do in your biblical studies prayerfully where God leads you in that. So God bless you. Talk with you later in Jesus' name.